Hi, I hope you've enjoyed several installments of this series, A More Excellent Way. In this series, I'd like to talk about some foundational change in the way we think about things and how that may affect our thought process from there. So today I'd like to talk about the five senses and how we use them. Do you play in good taste? Yes, I'm sure you do, but do we actually taste the instrument? Hopefully not. Okay, so four senses remaining. Do you stink when you play? <laughs> Sometimes we feel we do, but yeah, usually we are bathed well, so three senses. Um, do you look good when you play? Of course you do. Good playing always looks fantastic. We could talk about that too, and using visuals in, in our playing, but let's take that one away too. So we've got two senses left. We've got the sense of hearing and the sense of touch. So often I ask students, what's the most important of our five senses when we're playing our instrument? And they say, oh, hearing, of course. And hearing is indeed important, but I would like to postulate that the sense of touch is even more important. When we play, we only hear what happens after the fact. So if we're going to prevent errors, we need to develop our sense of touch more than our sense of hearing. Or to put it another way, we need to develop our sense of touch in relation to our sense of hearing, right? So if you're playing out of tune and your teacher says, listen, 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 can't you hear it's out of tune? Maybe they should say, feel, 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 <laughs> and anticipate the hand patterns. Divide the hand correctly before you put the fingers down. Maybe it's a matter of listening. Maybe it's a matter of touch. <laughs> and so um, I, as you go through every issue you work through on the, on the instrument, think about the way that touch could be a primary um, receptor for you. I used to have a, when I was a student, I used to have a problem keeping my bow close to the bridge because I didn't want to do it. It was hard to keep my bow close to the bridge. And people said, when you, you know, shorten the string, when you come up high, move close to the bridge. And I was like, maybe I want to, maybe I don't want to. But I've developed an awareness of how it feels when the bow is tracking well. I developed an awareness for the touch of a well-vibrated string. And then when I think of that, my bow is always going to the appropriate spot, whether it's a long string or a short string. And um, I don't even have to think about how it looks. I'm just thinking, what does the touch tell me about it? So there's an example, two examples. As a matter of fact, I talked about intonation and I talked about sound production. So again, in this series, a more excellent way, I'm here just to give you some you know, baseline, fundamental sort of uh, things to think about. And so for this week, I'd like you to think about the sense of touch being the primary way you contact your instrument. I hope this has a lot of benefits for you in terms of practicing and in terms of performance, in terms of perfecting your art and then also getting it out to other people. Thanks so much and enjoy feeling good about your playing.